Continue now with the WBZ Boston Globe U.S. Senate debate between Republican Gabriel Gomez and Democrat Ed Markey. And gentlemen, let's now focus briefly on immigration reform. You'll go first here, Mr. Markey. Do you believe skilled workers should be afforded more leeway than unskilled workers to stay here while they seek citizenship, and why? Um, we need comprehensive uh, immigration reform. We have 11 million people here. Uh, they're not going back to the countries from which they came. And if they did, it would cause a recession. So we need a pathway that makes sure that uh, we're able to make them citizens, make sure that they come out from the shadows, make sure that uh, they become even more productive uh, residents of the United States of America. I support the DREAM Act uh, to make sure that uh, we can get those kids who have an education uh, the ability to be citizens. So I think those are important ingredients. Uh, we also need a formula where we do encourage um, those high-skilled workers to stay here, um, that we not lose the benefit of having educated them at the finest universities in Massachusetts or anywhere around the rest of the country. Uh, that should be an essential part of our economic growth plan for the 21st century, uh, not to educate people so they can go back to other countries, but that we find a pathway for them to stay here in our country. I think that is key. Now, we also have to make sure that they're not replacing Americans who have the same job set, uh, same skill set here in the United States at the same time. So it's a formula that we have to construct, but at, at the bottom line, it's going to be important for us to find a way of keeping those skilled workers here uh, as long as they do not jeopardize the jobs of already Native Americans. Thank you. Mr. Gomez, 90 seconds. Sure. I have a new perspective on this. My parents immigrated here a year before I was born. I learned English in school. I grew up in a migrant valley. And right now I'm finally heartened that there's a gang of eight, which I will make a gang of nine when I get down to D.C., working on a comprehensive immigration reform. And I'm glad that they're focusing on securing the border first. That's the most important thing first, is securing the border. And there'll be milestones set on that. And there should be a pathway to citizenship. And that pathway can't be an easy path, but it also can't be an impossible path. They can't cut in line, and they can't get special privileges. And they need to do basic things. They need to pass a background check, criminal background check first. And they'll have to do it a number of times. It's a lengthy process. And then they need to learn English and integrate the American society. Legal immigration is good. My parents did that, and you see the benefit of legal immigration here. So this pathway needs to happen. Now, in terms of the skilled laborers, even though medical devices are our number one export, I would argue that the kids that we educate here in Massachusetts is actually our number one export right now. They go out and compete in their home countries with us right here. We need to figure out a way to keep them here without risking the jobs of the people here in Massachusetts. So I favor that and fire our comprehensive. The only way we're going to get this comprehensive immigration reform done is by bipartisanship, Congressman. We're going to need more Republicans and more Democrats to get this done. I do. And it's going to take, sir, you have, okay. and this is where I position myself better. Sorry, sir. Let him respond, please. Look at, we've been waiting for the Republicans to come over on immigration reform for a generation. They've been the ones that have avoided our capacity to be able to put together a bipartisan coalition. So right now, yeah, there's a brief and hopeful opportunity here that might come out of the Senate. But over in the House of Representatives, those Tea Party Republicans that control that institution, they're still looking over at this issue saying, most likely no way that anything can happen. So thank God we have a handful of people who are now coming together out of the Republican Party. But let me just tell you, I've been on this issue and working to, towards comprehensive uh, immigration reform for years. And finally, we have a small number of Republicans coming over to help us. But this has been a Democratic issue over the years. We need it to be Republican as well. It has to be bipartisan. Hopefully, working with the President, the Senate can pass legislation go, that will break the gridlock in the House go, where go Tea ahead. Party Republicans have just been obstinately, obdurately Point. opposed to I comprehensive go ahead. immigration I will, reform. I will make it a gang of nine, Congressman. I will make sure that we get this done in a bipartisan way. For the last 40 years, Congressman, you have voted 99% of the time with your party. You've proven you can't reach across the aisle. In order to get this bill done, which will be an absolute shame if we don't get this bill done, they've been talking about this for over 30 years. It's going to take bipartisanship, Congressman. It's going to take reaching across the aisle. John, it's going to okay. take getting more Republicans John, and more want, Democrats. John, I want to get in another question, I, I, so take I, I, 15 I, seconds. Thank please. you. Look, at, I, have dozens, of you. I, I have dozens of bills which I have passed with Republicans over the years on energy, 
on telecommunications, on health care, on nuclear security, all the way down the line. Dozens of bills, many of them recent. Okay? So this whole idea that Mr. And Gomez is going to be bipartisan uh, and that my basic philosophy is not bipartisan is completely wrong. And my entire time. career is premised upon working with Republicans to pass bills that help Massachusetts and help our country and that's why dozens of those laws okay. are now on the books. And equal time. Congressman, your 40-year career, or almost 40 years, sorry, your almost 40-year career down in D.C. I think speaks for itself. 99% of the votes that you've taken, you've taken on an ideologically rigid partisan way. Look, my, okay. and I would look argue, John, John, I would argue John. That but let him finish, then would, you can. And I would argue that 1% of the time you didn't vote with the party, you were left of the party. Okay, let him in. And it's going to take, it's going to take bipartisanship to get these bills done. Just you can have a brief exchange here, but it's got to be brief. Look at, my, look at, my, here, here, here's, here's one, one at a time, time. John, one at a time. John, I've had a job down in Washington. It's been to battle Tea Party Republicans okay. to bring out interest that are contrary to Massachusetts. I've been down there fighting the Newt Gingrich Republicans. And both Newt Gingrich and, and Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, they're both endorsed and sent contributions up to Mr. Gomez. And they they want Mr. Gomez down there to help them get the majority that will ultimately further this gridlock that and they final have fostered over this last generation. That is the heart of the problem. Go ahead. That has been what I've been yep, fighting. I've got it. Go Congress ahead. Congressman, if you want to run against you know, Newt Gingrich or George W. Bush or even Gerald Ford, who was president when you were down there for the first time, you should have ran against them. Okay. I'm an absolute new kind of Republican, Congressman. You know it. People in Massachusetts know it because they've gotten to know me. Gentlemen, I'm...